this week on Crossfeed. Blasphemy. How far is too far? Ben Stein. Expelled. Going to church at the Jedi Temple. Can schools discriminate based on sin? And Galileo. Heretic or hero? Welcome, everybody. This week's ver- edition of CrossFeed News. I am Dr. Jim Butler. I serve as pastor of St. Luke's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. And I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. And welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. I think we may have a slight delay going So it looks like we've got a little bit of a delay now. Hopefully it won't get any worse. Yeah, and sometimes it clears up, too, so maybe it even get a little better. Now, Dale, where's yeah. where's this, this green shirt you had on last week with the big G on it? <laughs> yeah, we're not talking football this week. <laughs> that You said stood for goat, right, or something like that, or giants? <laughs> <laughs> oh man it was a good game but yeah I mean honestly and, and I know you'll agree with this um, I was talking to the guy from our church afterward and uh, who's also a big Packer fan and he says you know the outcome of that game didn't really matter because whoever, pay, whoever plays against the Patriots is going to get stomped anyway so, I don't know. I and then another guy I know that lives in Green Bay. They only, he said, "Oh, he said, well, we can all get back to our lives now." <laughs> I mean, Giants. They only Giants lost them only by three points, so they may wind up with a real good game, but who knows? <sighs> but let's do our first story. Why don't we do the update? No, I have to. Now, we do have a delay here. Go ahead. I, I have a, a kind of interesting story to tell. Um, we had a mouse. We've, we've had mice worse this year than any other year. I don't know if it's because it's been so much colder or what, but um, we've just, you know, we, we've had quite a few, and um, mainly about the only thing that's worked against them is poison. Well, I finally figured out why the traps weren't working that we had set out. We had a, I saw a mouse down in the basement. And I set out some traps of these sort of um, these Tomcat black traps. It's got a little tongue sticking out of it, um, a pressure plate, and then it just snaps shut. They're plastic, and they're real easy to use. So I put some peanut butter in one and some commercial bait in another one, and I put them down right where I saw the mouse hanging around. I walk up the steps, and I turn around, and I just start watching. And pretty soon this thing comes along, and uh, and... I watched it climb into the trap and sit on the pressure plate and eat the peanut butter and the bait in these traps and climb out and go on its way. So it was too small to set off the trap. <laughs> so I, uh, I I put some poison down there, and, and I found it this morning. So... Um, it's uh, it's gone now, but uh, <laughs> irritating. <laughs> Actually, we are two laboratory mice who wish to be on your show yeah. as part of an intricate plan to take over the world. Let's do our update story here. Um, about a year or so ago, we did a, a podcast and we talked about this uh, Wisconsin Lutheran High School out in well, Wisconsin City Lutheran High School. Wisconsin Senate is uh, another Senate of Lutherans. Uh, Dale and I are Missouri Senate. And uh, this group is called the uh, Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Senate. And they have a high school, boarding high school, in Southern California. And they had two girls that they accused of having a uh, uh, lesbian relationship. Uh, and following that, they remove them. And Dale and I question it a little bit because there's never any evidence proven that they had this relationship or anything. It was 
suspected that they're, they're, you know, apparently standing too close together or something, and it was never quite really sure. Anyway, they sued the school because uh, California has a non-discriminatory policy against uh, uh, sexual orientation. And the judge, the first judge to hear it, it's going to be, it's going to be appealed to the next level, uh, threw it out of court. She said, uh, basically, that's really nice for businesses, but this is the religious-based school. Therefore, it is not uh, valid. It has no bearing on this particular little school. And personally, I was kind of glad to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they need to be able to um, uphold the, you know, the teachings of the school. And, and I mean, this is, this is one of those questions of uh, how much can a – uh, church or the state rather step in and mess around with telling uh, churches and religious institutions what they can or can't do. You know, it's it's sort of like if if you're going to follow this idea through, then you would. The next thing is they would have to say, well, you can't discriminate based on uh, based on sex. If you know if you don't allow women pastors, too bad. You have to allow them. So. Um, and that's not the state's decision to make. So the same thing here. I mean, I we talked about whether or not it's a good idea to um, to expel them uh, based on uh, based on that. But then again, a lot of religious schools, if you get pregnant, you're not married. You know, colleges and that you'll get kicked out for that too. So you know, I don't think it's necessarily hypocritical. No. Also, I did wonder about this lawyer that they had. Uh, and uh, I, the, the, the principal, who, by the way, is a different name. It's now Steve Rosenbaum. It was something else. It was actually a pastor. said he was pleased for confident that things will continue to proceed according to the Lord's will. But it, uh, um, but this isn't a direct quote from the lawyer. I always wonder, because it's not... But I really wonder. I'd like to know the direct quote there. I'd like to know what he actually said. Yeah, I'm just imagining them <laughs> taking what he said, you know, like, well, we went through, we found all the sinners, and we expelled them. Now we don't have any students. <laughs> or faculty, or anybody else. Yeah, or faculty. <laughs> and I had to fire myself, too. <laughs> or lawyers. We started going down the line, and yeah, we we found that uh, lawyers are at the top of the list, so... <laughs> <laughs> you do know what the difference between a dead skunk and a dead lawyer in the middle of the road is? There's skid monks in front of the skunk. What? Oh, yes, I have heard that one. <laughs> oh, man, now we're going to get sued by somebody. <laughs> so, Satan. Do we have any lawyers listening or watching? So, Satan and God are talking one time, and God looks at Satan and says, you know, I should sue you. And Satan says, where would you get a lawyer? <laughs> I heard that one, too. <laughs> Boy, no control. I so, got lawyers. So, yeah, I, so. you know. So, but that was the case out there in California. And, uh, glad to see that came to a, a, a good thing. Um... So far, they uh, uh, right now they're going to get ready to. Um, it's going to be appealed to uh, the next level, uh, which would be very important if it was, and uh, and it was ruled the same way because the superior court doesn't settle the issue in other courtrooms, but appeals court ruling would actually apply across the state. So it could be a good thing. I did not know that. Oh, uh, where should we go to? Well, talking expulsion. Let's go to expel the movie. Okay. This is something that this information's been out for a while. I just came across it. Um, my wife passed it on to me actually, and uh, and it's it's coming out in February. It says, although um, I know they're running a contest to get free tickets, and the contest isn't it doesn't end until April. So I'm not sure. What good, if it's coming out in February, what good a ticket, a free ticket in April would do you? But, um, 
so I, there's no actual release date on this. This is, if you're familiar with Ben Stein, actually, tell you what, let's first, um, here's the trailer for the movie. It's about seven minutes. It's kind of long, but it gives you a real good idea of what is, uh, what the movie's all about. So here's that trailer. wondering what I'm doing here. After all, even though I've done my time in the classroom as student and as teacher, I'm better known as a writer, public speaker, social activist, game show host, even a speechwriter for Presidents Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. Life has been very good to me and I'm very grateful. Like most people, I also have questions, very big questions like, how did we get here? Where are we going? Is there a meaning and purpose in life? Are we, the universe, and everything in it, merely the result of pure, dumb fate and chance? For most of my life, I believe the answers to these questions are fairly straightforward. Everything that exists was created by a loving God. That includes rocks, trees, animals, people, really everything. All along I've been well aware that other people, very smart people, believe otherwise. Rather than God's handiwork, they see the universe as the product of random particle collisions and chemical reactions. And rather than regard humankind as carrying the spark of the divine, they believe we're nothing more than mud animated by lightning. Somehow, That mud found a way to grow, reproduce, swim, crawl, breathe, walk, and eventually think. I have no problem if people want to believe that sort of thing. After all, we believe in a free society. This isn't Nazi Germany. People are entitled here to believe and say whatever they want about belief in God and the development of life. At least, that's what I used to think. This is Dr. Richard von Sternberg, mild-mannered research scientist. Until 2005, he also edited a small scientific journal affiliated with the Smithsonian Institution in Washington until he published an article by this man. As a result, Dr. Sternberg quickly found himself the object of a massive campaign that smeared his reputation and came close to destroying his career. After the publication of the Meyer article, the climate changed. It moved from being chilly to being outright hostile. Shunned, yes, and discredited. What I'm asking for is is the freedom to follow the evidence wherever it leads. What was so damning about this article? Nothing, as far as I could tell. It merely suggested that perhaps we aren't mud animated by lightning after all. Dr. Meyer argued that there are signs of intelligent design in nature. The digital code in our DNA could not have come about by accident. Instead of a cosmic mistake, he says the evidence seems to indicate that we are the product of a higher intelligence. Publishing Dr. Meyer's paper would not have been an issue if we were living in the time of Galileo or Einstein. But unfortunately for Dr. Sternberg, we live in a very different era. This is the era of Darwin, and in such an era, those who challenge the status quo seldom go unpunished. As I investigated this situation, I discovered Dr. Sternberg is far from alone. Many other scientists face similar persecution. 
They're losing their jobs. They can't get tenure. They're denied publication in scientific journals. And they're openly ridiculed and ostracized by their peers. All for questioning Darwin. It's the kind of thing where you just learn to keep your mouth shut. I have been told to shut up. We were accused of, of being diabolical, theocratic uh, conspirators who were trying to uh, force religion into the classroom. It isn't just scientists attacking these guys either. The media's in on it, the courts, the educational system, everyone's after them. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. After all, these guys are asking some pretty dangerous questions, suggesting that Darwinism is not only improbable, it might actually be dangerous. I should know better than to ask such questions. After all, I've been warned. On the whole, they're not scientists. Intelligent design is not a research program. And it's all propaganda. They're distracting you from what's important. As a scientist, I am pretty hostile to a rival uh, doctrine. The more I thought about the situation, the more I wondered why we tolerate free speech in every other area of the society, but not here. What makes this situation so different? In my experience, people who are confident in their ideas are not afraid of criticism. So that tells me the Darwinists are afraid. They're hiding something. We're so schizophrenic. We talk about things being designed and optimized. But then when you ask us, especially in public, we're all about defending neo-Darwinism. I now realize it's my duty to get the word out, to warn others before it's too late. So I'm going to begin by warning you. Feel free to watch this film if you must, and I hope you do. But you've got to know that doing so could land you in a heap of trouble. Some of you are going to lose your friends for watching this film. Some of you may even lose your jobs. In fact, if you're a scientist with any hope of a future, I suggest you leave right now. College or high school students, especially teachers, legislators, journalists, anyone else with a stake in this debate should probably leave right now as well. But if you do leave, will anyone be left to fight this battle? Anyone? Anyone? So now, Bueller? <laughs> yeah, you know, if you've seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off or The Wonder Years, you know, he he basically reprised the role in that um, in that series. So um, it's a, it's a, you know, he's not just an actor. I mean, well, I was I was impressed at his long list of uh, credentials, you know. So. He's fairly conservative politically, actually. He's, um, he might even be libertarian, I'm not sure. But very, very conservative. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me. You know, really what we're, we're talking about here, though, and, and I think it's important as we look at this, uh, first of all, this is not a, and we've talked about this before, and I don't think we re need to rehash it, but this is not a young earth creationist, um, discussion here what stein is talking about is intelligent design and um and basically what he what he's saying is um you know as soon as he's not even necessarily talking about teaching intelligent design in school at least from what i've seen what he's talking about is allowing people to even mention it because as soon as you even suggest that all these things didn't just sort of fall into place by themselves by, you know, I love how this has a, a, a lightning bolt striking a mud puddle, um, that all of a sudden you're kicked out, you're, you're ejected, you're, um, no one's going to take you seriously and no one's willing to debate it either. And I've met very few people who are, um, well, Let's just say atheists, but it's not just atheists. Um, 
but the the atheists that I've met that are very against the whole intelligent design thing, they don't even want to debate it. At least the ones that I've met, they um, are basically they'll ridicule it. Um, they're, they're willing to debate it for uh, just a, a little while, but then as soon as you come up with something that um, where th- that they don't have an answer to, they'll resort to ridicule. And, oh, you're just trying to push religion and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, that's that's irritating because I've encountered that time and again. And I'm not saying that everybody's like that, that all atheists are like that or anything like that. But um, I'm saying that that is what I have encountered um, time and again. Well, I, I, I keep going back to Richard Dawkins' uh, book, The Blind Watchmaker. And it starts off and says... Biology is the study of systems that appear to have been created by with a design. Oh, very nice blade! And, you know, I mean, he admits it looks like there's a design there. But it can't be that. It must not be that. It can only appear that way. And so let's get off, you know, I mean, that's a presupposition you're entering it with. And uh, so that's what I think is, is one of the things. And this is the first time. There actually was an article some time ago in First Things about... Uh, about how many um, universities and stuff were were removing professors and, and keeping them from advancement if they, you know, did not bow down to evolutionary dogma. You know, to even go outside of it mm-hmm. a little bit, you were considered a crackpot. I'm not crazy. I was talking to a guy that works uh, for, well, now he works for Answers in Genesis. He's a retired professor from uh, Washington University in St. Louis. And um, he was doing a presentation at our uh, pastor's conference. And they said, somebody asked him, um, you know, how many how many Christians are there working at Washington University? And he said, oh, there's lots of them. Just a whole bunch of them. Um, most of the janitorial staff, the uh, grounds crew, the... <laughs> Like, oh, oh, faculty? Oh, uh, none. <laughs> so, and if there are, they're, um, you know, they're real quiet about it. So, I mean, he, he had been there long enough that he managed to get away with a few things. I think Washington University is a Jewish school, isn't yeah. it? So, there may not be too many Christians at a predominantly Jewish institution anyway, uh, as opposed to, say, St. Louis University downtown, which was a Jesuit school. But the number of generally of evangelical uh, Republican faculty, there's been uh, studies that how how college campuses are overwhelmingly Democratic. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I went to Madison, so I can guarantee you that at least there it was. Actually, <laughs> especially in the theater department. <laughs> we had some a young couple visiting our church today, and he's a graduate of University of Wisconsin Madison. Uh, went there all the way through his PhD. Now doing some postdoctoral work out here at Tufts. And what's his uh, degree in? That he never got around to telling me, but he, he's doing something with Tufts Medical School, so it must be some kind of medical degree. Okay, so medicine. See, yeah, I mean, there you're talking sciences, but in the it, all the the arts stuff, um, and I, I mean, I can't really speak to. I mean, yeah, I have a degree in psychology, but um, you know, in all the all the the art stuff, it's it's about. I mean, if you if you want to get a good sense of what liberalism is all about, um, whether you're for it or against it, <laughs> you just go there and. Go down to Vilas Hall and hang out in the green room for a while. Oh, man. I used to eat lunch down there and just sit and listen to the conversations around the room. Man. He is just so non politically correct. You know? <laughs> Somebody ever called me I almost choked on my sandwich a few times. An anyway, um. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of expelled, we have so one another thing about this Sorry. this film. Um, the uh, 
there, there's one thing in here that I'm, I'm kind of wondering about, and I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see how they're going to handle this. It says, uh, Expelled doesn't just talk to people representing one side of the story. The film confronts scientists such as Richard Dawkins, author of The God Delusion, um, who we mentioned before, influential biologist and atheist blogger P.Z. Myers, Eugene Scott, head of the National Center for Science Education. Creators have expelled across the globe over a two-year period, interviewing scores of scientists, doctors, philosophers, and public leaders. Um, so, you know, they have these these other people on there. Now, the question is, it says they confront them. It doesn't say it listens to, you know, to what they have to say. So I, I'd be interested. I mean, most of these things, this, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this going, okay, this sounds like a conservative Michael Moore documentary, you know, um, and so I'm wondering how they're going to present this and, you know, is, are they going to give any time, you know, to the, um, to the other side at all as far as really allowing them to present their views or, or why they believe that things should be the way they are. So, okay. Okay. Just had to get that in. Thank you. Speaking of expelled, let's go talk about Dana Jacobson. She has been, well, wasn't actually expelled, though she should have been. Uh, I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Yeah, um, this is a tricky one to report on because we don't want to put an explicit tag on our show. <laughs> um, Dana Jacobson, who's uh, uh, from ESPN, which I had... I have to admit that I don't watch um, very often unless there's a Packer game on it. Um, but they, uh, she was at a a celebrity roast, mm-hmm. or Mike and Mike, and to she got kind of drunk. Kind of. <laughs> Yeah, well, she had a bottle of vodka sitting there. And apparently she was cursing like a sailor as she was making her presentation. And uh, she kind of, I mean, for such a kind of a pretty girl, kind of you kind of hate to see this, you know, you know, really filthy language, think of it coming out of her mouth. Yeah. She, uh, here, here, try to quote this. Um, she, she was, <clears throat> she said, F, and you can fill in the other three letters, Notre Dame, F, touchdown Jesus, referring to the statue there, and, um, F, Jesus. We're in trouble. Which, um, <sighs> I guess if you're drunk, it, <laughs> it might be acceptable. Um, but, you know, to say that sort of publicly, uh, well, that may be her opinion. Um, and she's entitled to her opinion. That's going to be really offensive to a whole lot of people. And uh, she's going to end up offending a lot of her viewers. It just doesn't seem like a good idea. Right. Well, one of the things, of course, is this was not uh, um, you know it wasn't really broadcast I mean it was uh, you know one of those things that was kind of quiet uh, and nobody had a cell phone there to videotape it the cell phone it was videotape it live I mean this was reports but I mean what I can't they suspended her which was kind of the least it should happen I mean, you think of um, uh, Jimmy the Greek Snyder, who once said, you know, that uh, you know black guy people are, you know, athletes are stronger because that's you know the uh, they they bred them that way during slavery era, and um, you know, and that uh, Howard Cosell or someone was talking about some black player running yeah, down. And, look at that monkey. Yeah, look at the little monkey. You know, look at the little monkey. You know, and it was just like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you look at uh, Don Imus. Right. I mean, he lost his career, and and his yeah. comment. It, it, I mean, he was already a, a a shock jock. I mean, you expected him to say obnoxious things. People wanted him to say obnoxious things. 
So that one I never really understood why that was such a big deal. But um, then uh, and then you had uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Michael Richards, the guy that played Kramer on uh, on Seinfeld. And uh, you know, I'll have to admit that Richards really went over the top um, much more than anybody else because I mean he went on a rant. It wasn't just one thing he said, but um. But I mean, you know, this is this is right in line with that, mm-hmm. and it, you know, it almost, you know, it, it was pretty much not noticed, uh, you know, except for the fact that the press of Atlantic City reported on it, and then the bloggers got a hold of it, and uh, you know, and then it went from there. Right. It was. So, it was. Uh, again, if, if somebody had had uh, like Michael Richards, Richards that had you know videotaped it on their cell phone, or if uh, somebody had you know done something like that, I and, and we'd had video of it, I think it probably would have burned up the internet. She probably would have been a lot of trouble. I think one of the things that that helped yeah. her out was there was no video, there was no audio. There's just this one report that you know the bloggers then started getting around, and that's how you know other people got hold of it. Uh, yep. You know, and so that's probably what saved her. But, you know, it's just like, otherwise, I think she would have been, as even it is, it's just written. I think she should have been fired just for being saying, you don't say that kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you get, once again, it's one of these things, again, you could get away with saying it because they know the Christians aren't going to go burn the headquarters down in Bristol, Connecticut. Yeah. You know, I mean. Yeah, the, and that groups, was this like, blogger uh, said, it's not like she said F Allah. Or F. Jesse Jackson, you know, um, and he says, uh, after all, we should be used to the double standard that Christians are okay to attack, I suppose. <laughs> so, and, and frankly, I say, if you want to attack Christians, go ahead. Uh, you start, you know, throwing nasty words at Jesus. Um, that's a little different. You know, you want to attack us, go ahead. I, I don't care, you know. But that's, I mean, that's just offensive. Uh, there's plenty of things. If you want to attack me, um, you know, if, if you can't come up with a list of things to attack me about, I could probably give you a list. But um, <laughs> or, or just talk to people from my congregation. You know, they probably could too. You know, my family. You know, but uh, yeah, Jesus, he's there. You're you're treading on totally different ground. Well, you know, the neat thing though. Again, here here's where we talk about grace and forgiveness. That if she mm-hmm. saw that sin as a Jesus, I blew it. Please forgive me. He would. Mm-hmm. You know, that he yeah, died and... even for that. He died yeah. for blasphemy. Yeah. Impressive. So, and, and, you know, and that's the difference, too. And now, okay, then, then you get into the whole discussion of, okay, um, even though, you know, if she apologized to the Christians, you know, um, okay, then should she still be fired? Because if the Christians forgive her, you know, and then there's there's that that whole question, because um, you know there's the okay, yeah, you're forgiven, but there's still earthly consequences, you know, to your actions. So, yeah. I would say it would depend on the apology. If it was, if I have offended anyone by my actions, I'm deeply sorry. Which, of course, once you throw the word if in there, it also means, but if I didn't offend anybody of you, I'm not the least bit sorry. So then, that, yeah. You know, uh, um, but if it was, you know, I was, I was drunk, which is wrong. I was swearing, which is wrong. I said some very offensive things, uh, which have, you know, upset you greatly and should. I have, you know, um, I should be fired for this. I realize that, but I'm deeply sorry, and I ask your apology, ask forgiveness. You know, if it was a real apology, not yeah. only these, if I've offended you, then I'm sorry, or maybe, maybe I could have put this better. Mm-hmm. You know, to stay away from the yeah. weasel words there, then I, I think we could do something. But yep. I don't know that picture. So, she looks it'll... a little drunk as it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's like she's kind of staring off into space there. She's looking right at you. <laughs> no, actually, she's kind of looking above my head at, at the pictures behind mm-hmm. me. 
That's true. I used to have, when I was growing up, I had this Superman poster from, um, uh, from the, the first Superman movie mm-hmm. where he's like, you know, flying right at you. And, uh, and it was one of those ones where you kind of, you move and it, it kind of follows you, you know? I mean, it was, it was kind of bizarre. Cool. Very cool, you know? It so. sounds pretty cool. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! I wish that I had kept it in the, you know, in the sleeve and it'd probably be worth something today. <laughs> Most likely it probably would be, too. Well, speaking of people who've been expelled from things, let's talk about Galileo, since he was expelled from the church, Catholic, the Catholic Church, and uh, talk about his uh, Inquisition here. No one expects a Spanish Inquisition! Now, of course, this happened um, quite a while ago. <laughs> year or two, anyway. Uh, but what happened is... Well, <laughs> Galileo being, you know, running into trouble was a while ago. Um, the, but then uh, there was a professor in Rome and 66 of his colleagues protesting a visit by Pope Benedict. Um, it says, uh, this week, students joined the protest and have been on an anti-clergy campaign to voice their opposition to the Pope over comments he made in 1990 about the Church's inquisition trial of scientist Galileo, causing it, calling it rational and just. So, um, Pope's going to talk about death penalty, uh, but <laughs> they said, oh, hold on a minute here. We're scientists, and we kind of like Galileo. So, uh, you said 1990, 17 years ago, 18, well, give or take, and, uh, <laughs> you know, you said that, that it was okay what they did to him. <laughs> and we're still not happy about that. Of course, most of these guys were like infants, <laughs> these students that, that joined in the protest. <laughs> like infants when it happened. <laughs> if that. Yeah, one of the things, you know, they, in a couple places, they, uh, 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 First off, it's kind of interesting that uh, uh, yeah, yeah uh, they they have a contributor here on Fox News, uh, Roman Catholic priest named Jonathan Moore said they misread his 1990 uh, talk on Galileo. At a couple other places, said you know he used the same thing. Said that it uh, um, our it, weapon is supplies, supplies mm-hmm. and fear. Uh, that it was that uh, his comments may have been taken out of context. Uh, he speaks in deep scholarly talk that sometimes takes many paragraphs to unfold and, you know, sometimes several reads to grasp. In other words, he's long wooden and unintelligible. <laughs> our three weapons are fear and supplies and the ruthless efficiency and an almost fanatical devotion to the Pope. Ah. So, you know, looking at the, the whole Galileo debate, um, and as this article says, the... Um, there's there's nothing in the Bible that says that Galileo was wrong. You know, the um nowhere in the Bible does it say the earth is the center of the universe. That's a man made supposition. Helps prove one of the great themes you'll find in the Bible that man will always look for ways to glorify himself instead of God. So that was a good point. Um ironically for scientists in the seventeenth century, including Galileo, their craft was about glorifying God. That if God is the creator of everything, the discoveries in science could only bring mankind closer to knowing him, not drive a wedge between them. Which is a really interesting thing to think about, um, you know, when you consider what we talked about before with that whole expelled thing. Mm-hmm. There was an article uh, a few years ago in uh, Christian History and Biography, one of my favorite magazines, and uh, about Galileo and, uh, you know, his love of, of, of the Lord and his love of science. Uh, but again, when you're dealing with the Roman Catholic Church, you're dealing with scripture and tradition. So he was violating tradition, even if you can't prove it in the Bible. Uh, and See, actually, I always thought that the Roman Church taught that the Pope is the center of the universe. Uh, <laughs> just and, kidding, uh, just kidding. I'm not going there in case you have any Catholic people listening. <laughs> it's uh, just a joke. Just a joke. Um, uh, as opposed to your church where you teach that you're the center of the universe. Anyway. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's let's get this right. <laughs> um, but um, the other thing with the Bible is it's written from a 
experiential viewpoint. I mean, as I stand here on the Earth and look up, it sure looks like the sun. I mean, you know, and it sure looks like the sun rises, too. doesn't mean the Earth's the center. doesn't mean the sun rises. Uh, but that's how we talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, since then, I don't think that that the Pope is trying to say that Galileo is wrong. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably certain about that one. Um, I, th- I think we've established that. But, you know, the problem with, with these things is uh, that people see these kind of things and they say, see, the church is anti-science. And while some churches are anti-science, the rest of us would like to uh, probably apologize for those other churches. Because, you know, it's like I always say, when you become a Christian, don't check your brain at the door. You know, look at the evidence and um, and and see that that the evidence doesn't contradict scripture. That in fact it supports it, hey, and we don't have anything to fear. Historical, many, uh, uh, you know, scientific, you know, science, scientific people were Christian. Mm-hmm. You know, Gregor Mendel, the guy who discovered the whole thing about genetics, and got us on that whole, you know, was that was a monk. Um, yeah. And, Thanks a lot. <laughs> but what we've always believed in, and, 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 and as Lutherans teach, is that uh, you know, scripture always comes first, and reason must come under scripture, uh, mm-hmm. and that there are certain things that science just is not going to explain, and there are limits to human reason. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you look at Isaac Newton, um, uh, the great mathematician. Um, and why am I drawing a blank now? Blaise Pascal. Uh, Pascal, thank you. Um, you have. Uh, I always get Kepler and Copernicus mixed up for some reason, but um, I think both of them were. Yeah, Johannes Kepler was the one who first posited. Uh, that the star of Bethlehem was Jupiter and Saturn in conjunction. So, I mean, you've got, there's just all these guys throughout history that have been very prominent Christians and very prominent scientists at the same time. And they saw no conflict between them, and, and neither should they. You know, if if what we believe is um, is true, if, if the Bible is true, then we should expect that, the um that what we find by studying science is going to agree with you know that the creation should uh, correspond with the creator now you need to look at the whole bible in context you know because then you have people that say well you know if there's a god if there's you know if there is intelligent design well he's not very intelligent because look at all the problems well and then you know the bible answers that one too it's called sin um, but, and, yeah. So, science and religion, really not a problem to mix the two. There's a, there's a problem of sin, and then there's also the problem of a limit to our reason. Oh, yep, uh, we that don't too. know everything. We can't understand everything. If we understood everything, then we wouldn't have any need for God now, would we? No, do we need science at that point? <laughs> so you know, it's yeah. You know, so there's certain things we're just never going to know or have figured out. And that's the end of it. You know, we're going to understand. Okay, well, I don't quite understand this, but that's okay. Don't need to. Mm-hmm. I'll come in again. Well, I didn't expect the kind of Spanish. English well, we've expelled everybody. Which I guess leads us down to the one church that maybe doesn't do any expelling of people. The New Jedi Church. <laughs> we've talked about these guys before. Have we? I don't um, yeah, I, I, I know we've, we've at least mentioned them. Um, this is in the UK. And... <laughs> um, they... There are 390,000 Jedis in uh, the UK, according to the 2001 census. It was not 
they wanted Jedi to be included on the list to choose from, and uh, and they they were denied that, and so they came up with a regist- a special code, uh, so that when they asked your religion, you give them this code, and uh, and you could and then that way they could track it at least, and so yeah, three hundred ninety thousand. <laughs> All right, here you know. Here's the thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm a big Star Wars fan. All right, in fact, this picture, uh, this backdrop with Yoda is one of my computer desktops. See, it says <laughs> different think. <laughs> um, and uh, and 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 by the way, Yoda talks in Hebrew. Did you ever notice that the the sentence structure that he uses? is identical to Hebrew sentence structure where he puts the verb first. I realized that I was, I was translating some Hebrew and I was sort of translating it out loud, just, just following the words. And I went, Oh wow. <laughs> I sound like Yoda. <laughs> um, the other thing is, <laughs> the other thing is he sounds uh, suspiciously like Grover from Sesame street. Which is, of course, because Frank Oz did both voices. Right. But, um, you know, here, here's the thing, though. At least he didn't sound right. like this piggy. <laughs> All right. Guys, your religion, your, your founder is a Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> um, cause yeah, it says, it says, uh, um, Printed off a couple sermons, did a sermon in our house, a couple friends one night. See, I'm, you know, I'm, it sounds like they're really kind of emulating the sort of uh, Christian, um, or a lot of, they're borrowing a lot of ideas from Christianity. But uh, um, What I wondered about is, it's, he says, um, Every Jedi craves not these things. We do meditation, relaxation, and visualization techniques, and a bit of lightsaber training. Yeah, I want to know where they got the lightsabers. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of wondering that, too. I mean, there's those cool force effect ones, but, you know, not the same. And I also want to know where they got the little ball that floats around and and, and zaps you with the little, you know, tiny little blaster fire. Right. So, I was so that's cool. Around. I want one of those to kind of float around church while I'm preaching and wake people up. <laughs> 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 I would say, why don't you just try preaching ex- I- interesting sermons, but I won't. No, 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 no. <laughs> where did this guy show up this morning from Dallas, Texas? He just tra- just got moved up here. And so he's going to wind up coming to our church because we're the closest one. And, uh, he said, you don't sound like you're from Boston. He said, no, I'm from Kansas City. He goes, well, that's not too far from Dallas. I said, nope, just far enough. <laughs> we got so, some people from our congregation who, um, they winter down in, in southern Texas, right on the, um, right on the Mexican border, about the southernmost tip of, Me- of Brownsville. Texas. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's right around there. In Matamoros. Yeah. And, um, so they said that, Traveling from uh, from here, when they get to the Texas border, they're halfway. So it gives you a, a sense of how big Texas actually is. So, but um, yeah, back to the Jedi. Uh, so watching the the films as children gave this, these two brothers um, a good understanding of the faith. We had a knowledge of the Force from that and the teachings of Yoda, and we've read the teachings on the internet. <laughs> It's another good place to get your theology. Of course, if you're, you know, watching or listening to this, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, so our father's a karate black belt, and we used to train with him, which is where we got the martial arts. So I, I, w- I want to see him do some of those Jedi moves, though. <laughs> so the, you know, push you back and and the those flips and jumps and stuff that they do. Yeah. That'd be cool. Might make a believer out of me. (laughs) 
I don't know. I mean, you read this and you just kind of wonder, like... But you are not a Jedi yet. Well, I mean, L. Ron Hubbard said, you know, you want to get rich, start your own religion. I guess if you want to get rich, you can always rip off somebody else's, too. Uh, that'll yeah. work, you know, and... Well, so, you know, the thing is, I don't th these guys would be getting rich, but they're spending all their money on action figures, probably, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just don't know what you... I mean, it might be fun one time. But, I mean, how much... I mean, if you really want to get to Jedi religion, go find a Zen Buddhist. He can tell you the real stuff, you know? I mean, that's... That's that's that's, um, that's Jediism. It's, you know, it's just basically, you know, a, a rip of Zen Buddhism. Because that's what George Lucas is. Yeah, minus the lightsabers. Yeah. So, I don't know kind of reminds me of the 1970s when Kung Fu was on. You had all these people in the, the Eastern, you know, pseudo-Eastern religion stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, all the, like, New Age stuff, which, uh, New Age is more repackaged Hinduism. So, yeah. It, <laughs> you just go, um, guys, it's a movie. <laughs> all right? <laughs> it's not real. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the movies. I, I even like the prequels. There, I said it. <laughs> um, but in fact, I have the the original trilogy on VHS, but I have the um, prequels on DVD. So I'm not sure what that says, except that I bought them early. But the real question is, do you like Jar Jar Binks? Your hate has made you powerful. You know, I didn't hate him. <laughs> so put it that way. I didn't hate um, him the first time I saw the movie. Now I can't stand him, but, you know, I just... <laughs> he, 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 you know. But, you know, I think one of my favorite scenes from the prequels is when they were when they were taking that little submarine through the center of Naboo, um, which I thought having a, a liquid center and being able to travel through it and not being crushed by the pressure um, <laughs> was kind of stretching it. But, um, and, and just the whole idea of a, a planet with the liquid center being able to hold itself together. But that, that whole scene with the, the the monster chasing him and then a bigger monster comes and eats that one and you know always a bigger fish kind of thing um i i love that scene I, I thought that was so cool but <laughs> so I, you know here's here's my question though is of, of these 390,000 people that registered as jedi how many of them actually believe it and how many of them just said Oh yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> you know? Cause I, I, you know, I can imagine people do, man, I'd be tempted <laughs> for censuses, you know, cause you get these political calls and, uh, you know, we don't have to deal with that anymore since our caucus is over, but, um, you know, we, you get these calls and people want to ask you all these questions and you just want to give them off the wall answers cause you get so tired of listening to pollsters and, and stuff. and So, I, you know, I'm wondering how many of these people just put it on there as a lark. Because if there's 390,000 of them, you'd think you could get a little bit bigger congregations together than that, but they're just a couple people, you know, got a couple brothers, and they, they get a few more people there, you know. It's not a church, it's a fan club. Yeah, well, I, I think if you're right, I think if it was actually center... Uh, you'd actually be able to get, um... Bulky religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Um, we, we get a, you know, you'd have a few more people there, because actually that's, that, that, that very good. Uh, I think it was a lark for a lot of people, would have been a lark for me. I am a Jedi. I don't know if I'd want to lie to a pollster. I just would have hacked into the computers to change all the numbers around, that's all. <laughs> If you remember that very So if the CIA is watching. <laughs> that very famous um, uh, Bloom County strip back in the early 1980s. Uh, and uh, where 
Oliver hacked into the poles and they're like, and 30, 80% of the people prefer peanut butter to Walter Mondale. There's something very significant here. You would need to hack the poles to come up with that. <laughs> I mean, they were great. It was a whole series. It was just, they were just wonderful. And, uh, you know, that's when I started getting sick of pollsters and I kind of realized, I mean, you know, it's, you know, when, when the story, when, when the polls, what the polls say is the story. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, of course, when they get things wrong, it's, and they want a plague in their face. Oh, it's a conspiracy! Mm-hmm. Yeah, or just bad reporting. So We're just babbling here. Anyway. Hey, folks, yeah, speaking of uh, 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 actually comments worth listening to, uh, we got yeah. a really neat comment this week uh, from Over River. Yep. Over at River.com, because we've started posting our stuff, um, our video up on a number of websites, uh, River being one of them. Uh, we've been up on YouTube for a while and Google Video. Um, and where else are we at? Um, oh, anyway, there's a whole bunch of different places. Just about all of the video sites. Except for there's there's one, it's Cafe something or other. Meta Cafe. Media Cafe. Yeah, yeah. Um, they keep rejecting our stuff for copyright violation, but um, I imagine they probably wouldn't like that Yoda either. So, But anyway, um, uh, we did have somebody uh, on Rever that left a comment, and he says, Love your stuff. You crack me up. I hope you, I hope you rub off all um on all of these Christians who have no sense of humor. As for me, well I'll just keep smiling, you keep making your video. It's awesome. Uh signed Jinger. So uh Jinger, thanks for the comment. I and we really appreciate it. Well that could be. What's with a J though? Ginger is with a G. I don't know. You'll have to let us know. <laughs> so. so but we love comments, and uh, and we'd love to hear from everybody else. <laughs> and there are several ways that you can do that. Yep. And we have uh, always you can, comments on the show. Yep. Um, you can call our voicemail line. <laughs> and, and I think we're the first person. I don't think we've ever actually gotten a voicemail. So you can be the first um, by calling 206-350-4749. And, um, and you just get a, a voicemail machine there and you don't have to go through a bunch of uh, menus or anything uh, you just hear a little uh, welcome message to let you know you got the right place and and then it beeps and you can leave a message or you can email us at podcast at, at crossfeednews.com or if you're watching this in iTunes if you're watching the video you can just click on the screen right now and it'll take you right to our feedback page, and you can leave us feedback that way. Message for you, son. So. We'll quick shout out uh, not only to Ginger and to all those things, but also then to our sponsor. Okay. Right screen. There it is, PDA <laughs> Performance, uh, which uh, puts out wonderful software for the Palm OS. And um, and also, uh, I'd like to remind everyone that CrossfeedNews.com is a user-generated site. Now, Jim and I post most of the stories out there just because we haven't been getting many people, other people posting. We've had a few other uh, people, but overall, um, you know, we'd love to have more people. You know, if you find some some interesting religious stories, and um, there's plenty out there, uh, go ahead and post them up. On the site, if if you have trouble signing up or uh, or anything like that, uh, just drop us a line. Uh, you can use the feedback page on the website or uh, use the email or voicemail, and uh, and we'll be happy to help you out if if you're confused. There's a real handy little bookmarklet there uh, that you can put right in your uh, browser's uh, bookmark bar, so that when you find an interesting story, you just click crossfeed this, and it'll uh, generate the It'll copy and paste all the relevant information in for you and everything. So very handy. So we'd love for to have more users uh, submit stories 
and and I'll tell you when I am picking out stories, I do tend to uh, if we do have a, a user submitted story, since they're so rare, uh, I do tend to favor those. So if you see something you think, oh gee, I wonder what Jim and Dale would say about this, um, just submit it. And I'm not saying we'll definitely uh, cover that one, but uh, we definitely tend to favor those. So the real worry would be if they see it and they go. And if I submit this, they'll probably talk about it, so I better keep it clean. <laughs> so, With that, folks, well, hey, well, well, have a good evening and a good rest this week. Um, hope you had a good Sunday in worship this morning, and uh, we will be seeing you later on then. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless. Good night. God bless.